You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. The Democratic Party relies on black, Hispanic, and Asian voters, but you are the only candidate of color on the stage tonight, and the entire field remains overwhelmingly white. What message do you think this sends to voters of color? It's both an honor and disappointment to be the lone candidate of color on the stage tonight. I miss Kamala, I miss Corey, though I think Corey will be back. I grew up the son of immigrants, uh, and I had many racial epithets used against me as a kid. But black and Latinos have something much more powerful working against them than words. They have numbers. The average net worth of a black household is only 10% that of a white household. For Latinos, it's 12%. If you're a black woman, you're 320% more likely to die from complications in childbirth. These are the numbers that define race in our country. And the question is, why am I the lone candidate of color on this stage? Fewer than 5% of Americans donate to political campaigns. You know what you need to donate to political campaigns? Disposable income. The way, we fix it, the way we fix this is we take Martin Luther King's message of a guaranteed minimum income, a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month for all Americans. I guarantee if we had a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month, I would not be the only candidate of color on this stage tonight. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Senator Sanders, I do want to put the same question to you, Senator Sanders. What message I, I do you think? I answer that question, but I wanted to get back to issue of climate change for a moment, because I do believe this is the existential issue. Senator, with all respect, this question is about race. Can you answer the question as it was asked? I certainly can. Because people of color, in fact, are going to be the people suffering most if we do not deal with climate change. And by the way, we have an obligation up here, if there are not any of our African-American brothers and sisters up here to speak about an economy in which African Americans are exploited, where black women die three times at higher rates than white women, where we have a criminal justice system which is racist and broken, disproportionately made up of African Americans and Latinos and Native Americans who are in jail. So we need an economy that focuses on the needs of oppressed, exploited people, and that is the African-American community. But let's think about Senator Sanders. When the question of race was offered to him, the first response he offered was climate change. People think he was pivoting. What do you think? I think Senator Sanders was definitely pivoting. I think that there was a certain level of uncomfortability with addressing the issue of race head on. Um, as we as we saw, he quickly quipped back to make sure that he was giving race its due, and in particular as it relates to climate change and some of the drastic issues that have occurred across the African American community, specifically when it comes to climate change. But I think that he could have dug a little bit deeper and he could have used his time in a different way. Uh, Senator Sanders is someone who has um, enjoyed a lot of minority support, specifically black support, when we're looking at the last election, but also looking at a lot of the support in this election. Second to Biden, um, he's someone who has some of the strongest African-American support. So it surprised me that in his initial response, he almost totally eradicated black people until he was prompted by the moderator to actually bring it back. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, as the marijuana momentum continues, our folks at uh, MarijuanaStock.org have already reached more than half of their funding goal for the hemp CBD investment. So if you want to take advantage, you better get in now. Of course, hemp is a cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD, which means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana, but it won't get you high. Scott is sad. <laughs> now, folks, if you don't know, hemp farming is now legal in the U.S., creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. <laughs> it's an investment opportunity for you and the full folks at Fortune Real Estate have a simple business model. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed high-paying tenants, people like Chris. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. Now, all you got to do is invest as little as 200 bucks. Monique, you got that. In the crowdfunding campaign, up to ten thousand dollars. Amisha, some of that Sinclair money. <laughs> Doing the best. Go to marijuanastock.org. That's marijuanastock.org. 
Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin unfiltered video.